Oh, there you go. All right. How's everyone doing today? Maybe good? Fast. Yeah. 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 Y
And so, a little bit different, but they brought the school into the, to the library setting and taught kids how to do math, writing, those types of things. Um, what I thought, another library did, is they made a zombie movie, kind of like Walking Dead style. Um, so the teen patrons, uh, they $10 face paint, you know, they dressed themselves as zombies, and they made a movie about the zombie apocalypse attacking a library. And so they filmed it like the, the teens walking in, they had like a creepy alley, I guess, by the library. Um, and I was trying to find the video, I couldn't find it. But they had like the teens, you know, walking down the alley and into the library, and it was, it looked really cool. And they used like low lighting effects on their, you know, standard cameras. And they put it out on the internet, and people came to the library. They're like, wow, that is really kind of cool. Um, art for your library. So Justin Hankey, who uh, previously worked for the Portland Library, and now he works in Chattanooga, uh, what he did was he had the teams design the art for the library. So you don't have to buy the art now, you just you pay for the supplies. And these were actually some of the, the pieces that his, his patrons made um, that are now permanently affixed in the library. And the idea through that is, you know, he showed they had a uh, art high school teacher volunteer his time to sit down with high school students and go through, hey, this is how you do this type of art, those types of things. They even had a, uh, um, they have an art college next to the library. They utilized some of those graduate assistants or those graduate students to come by, volunteer their time, and kind of coach people on art pieces. And now their library is scattered with teen-driven art. So it's all custom, it's, it relates to the community. Um, I'm probably going to get this wrong, but it's a, uh, it's a very, there's a, high, there's, a different, there's a ton of different nationalities in Portland, Maine. And so this, this was representing all those different nationalities. Uh, another thing you can do is do an art gallery. Uh, I see a lot of libraries do types, types of little art galleries, and the kids love it because they do art gallery for their art class in high school. Now they can do it at the library, and different libraries do different things. Some give out prizes. Some say, hey, we will now hang your piece of art in our library, and it's a really good sense of accomplishment from a team perspective, going, wow, my art, because I want to be an art major, is hanging in the library. Um, it's, it's a really powerful statement, too, for for those, for those kids, and it makes them feel really good, like published. Um, another thing that people are doing now is film festivals. So they get groups of kids together. You know what the Indie Film Festival is? Uh, same idea, but it's all the all community. So they, they would then have like a movie night, and they would play different movies that these kids made. And you know, it's a really cool, their parents would come by, you know, their friends and family attend these film festivals, and the kids are like, oh yeah, I made this movie with my friends. And, they get their friends to attend the show who's never been in the library, and now you've just added users to your building that now they're interested and they're being interested. Um, there's also people doing like, so rap. Some people are, you know, a lot of, a lot of people are all oh, rap is terrible, vulgar, blah, blah, blah. But there is still decent rap. Um, you gotta search for it. Uh, but rap actually is poetry. And so uh, Patrick Sweeney actually, he started a rap program. Uh, at his library, and so big, heavy rap community, you know, the pants hanging down, and uh, he had the kids coming in to write rap, and he used poetry books to coach them. And so now those rap, those rappers, are now poetry slammers, and they they made that transition without really knowing it until like it was done. Like oh, I wrote a poem, and so it's a, it's a really cool uh, dynamic. Uh, miniature golf. So by purchasing like little pieces of foam or obstacles, you can do miniature golf in your library. And surprisingly, if you ask, if you have like a miniature golf course by your, by your building or in your town, ask if you can borrow a couple putters. Say, hey, you know what, I'm a library. And if you ask, surprisingly, a lot of people will say, sure. You know what, I don't, I'm not going to be using 150 putters today. You guys need it for two hours? Here, here's, here's a bunch of them. Let your kids go wild. And, it's a, and then it kind of engages the kids throughout the building. So they may not you know, be familiar with your library layout. And so, I don't remember what library this was from, but they engineered their course throughout the library, through all the different sections. And each golf course had, a, or each hole had a theme centered around the collection it was near. So it was by the, I don't know, Clifford Books. They had a Clifford obstacle. And so you can use those props to engage your environment. And your, and your patrons. 
Um, so the next group, next portion of this is about technology and using technology in your library to engage your, engage your patrons. A lot of people are still kind of afraid of technology and social media. So, you know, don't be afraid. Uh, there was a quote, and it was, don't be afraid to fail, be afraid not to try. That's my That's going to be my mantra. It is. It's a good mantra. <laughs> so, I did laser tag in the library. My, the director and everything, they were like, no, you know, that's, you know, bookshelves are going to fall, shoes are going to get crushed. It's like, no, 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 you know what? Let's just try it out and see what happens. Not a scratch. Uh, not, a, not a single book was damaged. <laughs> and, uh, and so I've done laser tag at about 10 other libraries, no injuries. And like some of the kids are running, they're leaping under things, I'm like, Ooh. but no, no, no one's hurt and no books were hurt, which apparently is more important. Um, so things you can, do with, you, you can do with laser tag, you can do uh, Hunger Games. You guys know what Hunger Games are? Cool. Otherwise, it would be a weird conversation. <laughs> so, the idea of Hunger Games, as you know, is Link Hover's Last Standing Wins. And so, Kent Key Library, we did a Hunger Games theme where, you know, people were in kind of pairs at first, but then after we sort of spaced them apart, uh, it was a lot of fun, and we, we gave Hunger Games style prizes, like the movie and the book and stuff like that. And we had, and then they wanted to do it again and again and again, they wanted to bring their friends. So a group of 10 became 20, became 40, became 100. And like, I can only do 16 people at a time, so it's really rough to do that many. But as you can tell, like, late people go laser tag, ah, I, I haven't done laser tag in years, or I've heard about it, I've always wanted to play, and they're not that expensive. Uh, sadly, Ubisoft made these, and they don't make them anymore. So you'll have to kind of shop around if you wanted to use this. But when you play, there's a scoreboard, and it keeps track of everyone's shots fired, who's out, how many points people have, and then projected on the projector, and the kids would run around. And I play. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the other thing I want to talk about is allowing things to circulate. People are always worried, oh, well, you know, hey, if I let this iPad circulate, it's going to come back damaged. Or, hey, if I let, you know, those Scipio cubes that you saw on the little table? One of the fears about those are, you know, people are going to walk off with them or they're going to get misplaced or whatnot. Happen. And if it does, deal with it then. Um, so don't be afraid to you know, fail in the sense that, hey, I want to let this circulate. I want people to check these items out. Let's try it and see what happens and adjust as necessary. So these are the things that um, libraries have been allowing their patients to check out. So a Curio tablet, um, you can get it for $150, way cheaper than an iPad. And it's also locked down in the sense that you can choose what apps you want to see. You can lock out settings, you can lock out Wi-Fi, you can filter on the things if you have to filter for SIPA. Um, everything, all managed by the device. Um, so that people won't be able to download things on accident from the Play Store or anything like that. And then it's preloaded with like Angry Birds, Fruit Ninja, all those games you guys wish you could be playing right now, <laughs> it has it. Um, and it's in like this little rubbery case, so it's kind of dropping, the kids this tall. Or, you know, this tall, so the height distance is going to really break anything. Um, but kids, kids love them. I know we have a two-year-old that was playing around with it. Kids are surprisingly adapted to tech technology. Um, I was talking to one of uh, the Smart Technologies people, and he was saying that he let his kid play with his iPhone. He got it back when there was a security lock. He's like, hey, what, what did you do? Kid's three, takes the phone, shows him where the unlock is, and hands it back to him. <laughs> so they're very adaptive. They can remember things. So, and this is locked down, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, 150. The, What's up? Do the apps that you buy, like, as, like they cost about the same as the app store, like, two? These apps are already downloaded on it. So really, this thing's probably only $100 and has $50 of apps already. Oh, OK. So you um, but pay. can you buy more? Yeah, you can buy more. They have their own like Play Store. Okay, and, and there are some that are free. My two-year-old has one of those, mm -hmm. um, and he can maneuver it faster than I can. Cool. Does it does it have internet access? Yeah. Yes. So they could, in theory, read online books. Correct. That are through it actually has a series of books downloaded on it. What age range? Two to two to my age. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, I 
actually have a comment. We actually have a Navi at our library, and what's cool about that browser is that we can set security settings so that the kids don't get in any, you know, unwanted websites, and we have the password for that. So it's kind of nice. That's a, on that's this a device, or was it a different it's, it's a Navi tablet. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. I spell Navi. And ABI. And you have a good response? You let the kids check them out and everything? Yeah, they sit in the corner and don't move. Seriously, okay. they sit there. And <laughs> it is, and now they tell their friends, hey, I played with this really cool thing at the library. And they go, library? Oh, yeah, it's that building down the street that looks really creepy that no one wants to go into. <laughs> you know, mine, it's actually not that bad. Um, they, a lot of kids associate schools and libraries with the same thing. Um, and a real, we're really not, we're, we're, no offense schools, but we're really not where we can do a little bit different things. Um, so, if a kid's associate, oh no, I go to school all day, why would I want to go to like a library? Um, and this helps break away those, those mantras. Uh, as for browsers, um, you can download something called Aqua Browser, a, like Aqua, A-Q-U-A browser. Um, it was originally developed for, um, a family developed for their son who had Down syndrome, and they didn't want him to, to you know, break the computer, he wasn't really comfortable using it. So it's a software package that you can install for free, and it has very specific apps and games and books that you can use straight through the computer. No hard to do anything. Um, the Sikio cubes. Those are those little cubes that were on the far left of the table. Um, so one of the fears from Sikio cubes were that people are going to walk away with them when they're set up in the library. So as a challenge, using my own money, I bought the Sikio set, had it open, put a computer together right by the exit of our library. And we have, we have a huge, huge entryway with like, and it's open, people can walk, grab, and leave. So I set them up, put the cubes out by the table. There's a, we had a one with a charging bay. And what happened was, instead of being stolen, kids put the cubes in the charging bay when they were done. <laughs> and so, like, they understand. They're not, they're, I don't know where we got this mentality that everything's going to be stolen, everything's going to be broken. But that's not the case. And other libraries have done this, they haven't had issues. And we allow these to circulate. People can check them out, take them home, play around with them. The new version, you don't need a computer. You use, there's a base that would send the games out. But the, the games include sorting by numbers, you can do mazes, you can spell words, those types of things. Uh, Sphero. Sphero is a robotic ball that you can, by moving your phone, you make the ball move. Um, these are Drop resistant, water is like waterproof. You can throw it into a lake and it'll just spin around. Um, we can take the ball, I can drop it from here, it'll bounce, and it still works. Um, I had somebody think it was a ball once and they threw it, and it still works. So these things are very versatile. The company, they launched them through clay pigeons and everything just to see you know, how much of a beating can these take, and they still work. Let your kids use them. Um, with Sphero, though, as an engagement tool, uh, go into your go into a high school or a uh, junior high and drive the ball around. Teens will stop and go, "Hey, what is that?" And now you've changed the dynamics of that conversation. So instead of you approaching a teen going, "Hey, this is a library. You should come by. We have books and videos and games. We have a maker space. Come by." That's kind of confrontational. <coughs> and some teens react negatively towards that. However, if you use the ball and they approach you, you've changed the dynamics of that conversation. You're kind of you're kind. Of, they're giving you permission to talk to them, in a sense. Um, and they're going to remember that conversation they had with you even more, because they're going to associate it with something. So, hey, hey, mom, dad, I talked to somebody today. They had this ball that they were driving around. I want to go check it out. It's at the library. Now they come to your library, they'll see everything else you have, and you've added users. Uh, Lego, we do. These are robotic Legos. Um, so Legos that move and throw. So, it's kind of hard to see, worry. But, out there, there's a little little black, and each black signifies moving a gear to the right, to the left, stop, play a sound. And you put a storyboard together to play all those, play those series of events. So by hitting a key, you can make the alligator's mouth open and close. Or by putting your, there's motion sensors, so you can put your hand in front of the alligator and it'll close its mouth. So it teaches kids the basics of programming. Um, and you'll put it on a laptop and let people check it out. Any questions? That is 130 for the Legos and then 90 for the software. Yes, it's 90 for the software, correct. And just buy a separate computer? A laptop. You can use your own computers that you have there. 
Uh, one sale a day, and Boot.com sell laptops every now and then for like $200. So I circulate laptops as well. It's 200 bucks. If it breaks, it's not the end of the world. I've probably got my money's worth already from it. And this website's again for what? One sale a day with the number one, and Woot, W-O-O-T. Can you attach regular labels to that? Do you have to be special to labels? Uh, you, you could attach normal Legos to it. Uh, the only differences are this little base and the two USB cables, or the USB cable thing and the, the gear that moves left and right. So is this then like a simpler version of the robot, their actual... That thing? Yeah, that thing. Yes. <laughs> uh, this is called Lego Mindstorms. Uh, it's basically Lego we use on steroids. Um, I like to think that I'm relatively smart. This was rough for me to figure out. I'm sure, you know, high schoolers would probably do it way better than me. But there's a, you can make this thing do anything. You can give it voice commands, and it will follow a predetermined path, pick up a ball, and bring it back. Um, I have one. I have not figured out how to use everything yet. But it's more expensive because it's a very powerful program. Um, it's like, it's, it's literally robotics. And developing a robotic application, and making your robot move and do things. But the kids think it's cool. Was there a question there? Um, so video marketing. So Chad Marin uh, of the Florida Library, what he's done, I'm going to read what he wrote to his, his libraries. He's a college librarian. So he, he made a press release and he says, we need you to hype your library. We are planning to video record student testimonials regarding library resources and services, and we'll love your input and or testimonial. Um, and he encouraged people to give a tour of their library, do interviews, etc to kind of use his students to advertise the library. And it worked out really well. Some of the videos went viral, some of the videos were really, really funny. So people, people would post it on their YouTube, and their friends would re, re Facebook post it or share it and whatnot. Um, so video marketing, and he had just the students do it to advertise the services of the library. And I think he, there was prizes for like the best video too. Um, so now the question becomes, how do I support these gadgets? A lot of people are always worried, you know, hey, and there's those websites. Um, hey, how do I support this? You know, my IT department is pretty rigid. They hate when I want to go buy a laptop because they have to secure it, blah, blah, blah. Um, I worked as director of IT, so I understand those comments. Um, just do it. Uh, you don't have to have a laptop tied to the network. Say, hey, you know what? It doesn't need to be tied to the network. I can install the software myself. We won't even plug it in. They don't, they're not, they're, none, of their, none of these games require internet use. So you can keep it off, off the grid. Um, but yeah, some do require laptops, but you can purchase them from one sale there at wood.com for relatively cheap. I always tell people refurbished items are okay. Um, I bought like 10 iPads, or iPods, sorry, for way less than what they're actually worth, or cost them rather. Um, and they're refurbished, and they're still, all still working and carrying around everywhere I go. Um, and reach out to Twitter and ask for donations. Um, I'm a huge fan of Twitter. Um, Twitter. Twitter class is awesome. Um, but definitely use Twitter to your advantage. It's not, it's not just you know, a social media tool. It's a, you can use it for reverse market. So if company X has, has something you want to use, tweet to them. Sell them on your dream of a project for your library. You will, you will be responded pretty well because now everyone's watching that tweet. They want to know how that company is going to respond. Uh, for instance, I had an issue with a smart table that wasn't working correctly. Smart Technologies told me, literally, you're a library, we really do schools, so yeah, we're sorry yours is broken, but we gotta, we got to support the schools first. I was like, oh, really? So I went on to Twitter during one of their, their conferences, and I hashtagged their, their conference that they were presenting at, said, hey, my table hasn't been working for seven months. What's the deal? I got a call from the project manager within an hour saying, hey, what can I do to fix this? I said, well, I have two tables that aren't really working well. They, they've been broken for a while. He goes, you know what? I'll send you two new, two new tables. Don't even worry about sending us the other ones back. So now I have four tables, and I only paid for two, and one of them was completely paid for, for a grant. So use Twitter. Um, <laughs> Sphero, I, they gave me free, I have a free Sphero ball and a box of t-shirts. Uh, Siftio, same thing. So all I did was tweet, say, hey, I want to do this activity, I want to bring your product to a library and market you to the masses. So if you have a population of 20,000, guess what? For 150 bucks, whatever their product may cost, 
That's how they're paying for marketing to 220,000 people. And phrase it that way, and you'll be fine. Um, another thing too, so kind of more engaging your space and patrons. Um, this is probably perhaps the most important takeaway. Uh, so there's a lot of people talking about makerspaces, a lot of people talking about fab labs. But some libraries fall short because they'll put all this money in, put a really cool 3D printer. And they go, all right, we did that, we're done. But really, the puck doesn't stop there. Uh, you need to train your staff to engage with your patrons and show them, hey, you know what, this is our, this is our 3D printer. Let me show you that we can, we can print something. You know, open up your purse or wallet. Let's, let's, let's reproduce, you know, that keychain you like. And then show them how to do it. So through engagement, you're gonna, you have to change the dynamics of your library. Um, engage, we have to change our dynamics from the fact that we used to be all process driven. Someone would come in with a book they want to check out, we check it out, out they go. Or someone has a fine, we like, this is your fine, they pay, out they go. We need to, re, we need to, we need to push back and kind of re-engage. Someone returns a book. Oh, hey, what did you think of that book? I haven't read it yet. What are you, you know, did you enjoy it? What was it about? And, and through those conversations, you're going you're gonna to change their demeanor. They're gonna, if they're having a bad day, now they're happy because someone asked them about their last read. Uh, for teens, and specifically children, they're very, they're, they're, they're more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They react differently to, to external stimulus. So, if a child had a book fine, say it was $5, um, he was over late, mom didn't drive him, he doesn't have a car, he doesn't have a job because he's a kid. So the library staff goes, hey, uh, it's a $5 fine. Turns to his mom, mom has to shell out five bucks, guess who's in trouble? Come on kids, the kid. Um, so now he has a bad taste in his mouth. He goes, you know, I went to the library, and I got in trouble, and that's it. He doesn't, he doesn't put anything else together, just beginning to end. Went to the library, got in trouble. So, what I've done, with, or what I tell people to do as well, is change that. Don't even do fines for the kids, but instead, put a, uh, put a sheet together. So, hey, if a kid comes up to you and has a $5 fine, well, if he shows you what he built on a Lego, wait to the fine. So, hey, you know what, John? I know you have a $5 fine. If you build me something with the Legos over there and tell me what it does, I'll wait your fine. The kid goes, okay. So now what he's done was, I went to a library, I built a Lego, and I talked to a librarian. Um, so you change the dynamics of that whole conversation. Now they made a friend. So they'll come back and go, hey, I want to make another Lego. Can I show you? And the librarian staff will probably say yes. So really engage your patrons. That's probably the most important thing that you can do now as well. Not just have the makerspaces and fab labs, but engage your, engage your kids with those makerspaces and fab labs. Sit down with them. Build Legos. Build 3D objects. Um, so staff communication is huge. Um, and some libraries are actually kind of redefining their circulation staff as resident experts. Um, some are making like really cool name tags for themselves. Um, so think of your circulation staff. Who would you say is, you know, cooks a lot, talks about cooking? Well, let, let your community know that they cook. Because now when somebody comes in and has a cooking question, oh, here's, here's Marge, she, you know, southern girl, and he loves to bake. Or, you know, the computer geeks, like I, come up to them and go, hey, you know, Brian's our resident computer expert. Do you have a computer question? Here, talk to him. He'll tell you, you know, his knowledge. I'm already working at the desk. Might as well engage my patrons. Fishing, et cetera. The list goes on. And so there's actually, you can actually have your staff write down your top five hobbies. When you get back to work, say, hey, staff, I want to know your five, five, the top five hobbies. Have them all write it down. Put a list together. Share it with the staff. So now when a, when a patron wants to check out a book about fishing, go, hey, you know what? Let me grab, you know, Bob, he's a fisherman. He'll take you to the fishing collection. You can talk about fish. Um, so how to talk to the next generation. So ask these things out of the blue. You see a kid walking around a library, say, hey, you know, what books have you read lately? You know, what kind of books would you like to see in our collection? Um, ask them what kind of games they want to see. Ask them what kind of programs they like to play with. Um, so socially, ask how they're doing. Say, hey, how's your day going? You know, how's school? What classes are you working on? And that they're going, you know what? Yeah, we got to do this huge science fair project about, you know, biology, and a lot of us are struggling. Now you know what kind of miniature collection you should put together. Put some biology books together, put them on a little table, so it's for the science fair. And now you've engaged your, engaged your patrons. Um, offer homework help. I know that some libraries do this uh, finals week thing, and they order some pizza. And kids come out from the woodwork, going to the library because there's free food. 
and they're all sitting there, and it's really not that noisy. Like they'll sit, do their homework, and work together. And the reference desk can come by and say, "Hey, you know, is anyone working on any you know reference-related questions that I can help you out with?" And engage that way. Um, so these are a couple other little things that I've seen other people do that I think are really really cool. <laughs> Uh, a mystery mystery grab bag. So what libraries will do is they'll put a bag, different colored bags, I mean different genres. They'll put that book in, so let's say mystery's red, they'll put a random mystery book into a red bag, staple it closed, write the ID number on the outside of the bag. Put a little put a little card right next to the circulation desk. People walk in, mystery bag, because who doesn't like mystery bags? They'll grab it, alright, let's check this book out, see what it is. They check it out, they go home. Open it up, oh, I've never read this book before. They'll flip through it, they like it, awesome. They'll come back and say, hey, do you have any other books like this? And it'll help redefine their, their reading lines. And it's been hugely successful. Um, holiday displays. So, but don't think of it as a holiday display, putting a Christmas time collection together. But find red and green books. And have, you know, whatever, if their spines are red and green, have the spines out. And put those at the edge of your shelves, or have them facing out. So if you have your rows of, of bookshelves with all the spines out, look for red books. Turn them so they're at the edge of the, uh, edge of the book facing out. So now when you walk up and down, you see all these red and green books. And you don't have to pay for it. Um, I haven't decorated my library for Christmas for the last five years. I pull out the boxes, I put them in the middle of the library, and as kids come in, they're like, what are you doing with these? go. And I don't have time to decorate. The kids do it for me. Oh, well, that's awesome. They love it. That's awesome. That's actually a really good idea. I'm going to put that in my PowerPoint now. <laughs> um, Be sure to cite her. Yeah, what's your name? Christy. Christy? Okay, I'll cite you. We'll talk afterwards. Um, so, QR codes. There's a huge debate on QR codes and the fact that they're worthless and they're a waste of time. No one likes QR codes, they don't do anything. Um, I like them. I think they're, 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 they're a transition to something else. I don't know what that else is. Um, but what you can do with QR codes is for your hardcover books, and you have an ebook collection that has the exact same as a hardcover, put that QR code down next to that hardcover book. Say, hey, check this out. I'm an ebook. Um, you can also do uh, using to find new content or online resources or scavenger hunts. People say scan the code, you get the next question, you go, go to the next event. Uh, augmented reality. Um, so you create a new dimension in your library. You guys know what augmented reality is? Yes, no, maybe so? Cool. So augmented reality then is, is a virtual, virtual environment. So I can augment this reality essentially. Hold my phone and see something completely different in the area. So what you can do is build a little environment for your library with last week's activities. So if people are running around playing laser tag, throw some photos up in the second dimension, third dimension, whatever it may be. And then when they load the app and hold their phone, they'll see those photos. Or, you know, what you're planning on doing next week. There's actually a Marvel app for augmented reality where you can, there's certain of the new and Marvel books that you can actually download the app on your phone. And you hold your phone to the specific picture that has the little icon. And the picture kind of moves and it makes it like a live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, I've seen other people with uh, like it's just like a hologram thing too when you hold it over. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so other cool uh, activities that people do. Library lock-ins, play games, watch movies, those types of things you lock the library after hours. <coughs> play laser tag. Um, teddy bear locking. I thought this was really cool. So. Uh, some libraries they'll take teddy, they'll have their 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 kids bring their teddy bears and say, hey, we're gonna do a teddy bear locking for you. Leave your leave your stuffed animal overnight, and you know they'll we'll we'll hang out with them. So the kids leave. I don't think the staff stays the entire night with the yeah. stuffed animals. <laughs> but they'll spend spend an hour or so, you know, taking groups of animals, stick them around to each other, and they will make them hold them props and stuff, and take all these little photos. And then when the kids come back the next day, they have a little photo book. Hand it to the kid, this is what your bear did, or your walrus, or whatever it may be, all night long. And so they would focus around parts of their collection, like the Clifford, like, I like Clifford, so. Um, Stick by the Clifford books, and now they're all sitting around their the Clifford prop. Um, video games. It draws people in, so why not do it? Um, 
have a video game night. Uh, have put up a couple Xboxes and have people play it. Uh, what, I, what I've seen other people do, uh, New York, they did a, uh, I don't remember what, what town in New York, but they let people check out a plot of land. And what would happen is, like, they have, they have like an acre of land, and they, would, they sectioned it off, farm different farming things, and library staff, or library patrons, sorry, could check out plots of land and plant, you know, whatever fruits or vegetables they like. And the idea was that their kids would come with and learn her. The, learn the culture of planting and gardening. And they would do different themes too. So for like uh, Halloween or fall, they would put up scarecrows together. And so it's a really cool community event. And all the fruits and vegetables and things like that that were made, they donated to a food pantry. And so the kids taught them the whole green thumb trick, as well as you know that good feeling inside that they or contributed to their community. Um, so what else? Again, you know, ask your teens their thoughts. Um, get them into your library, um, and not just as a patron, but get them in as a friend. Get them in as someone that you know wants to help develop a cool community program. Kids can program like they're smart. If you want to build an app, ask them if you're a patron. Say, hey, do you guys know how to build an Android app or something? One kid might, oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to learn it right now. I'm in high school, you know, I want to do that when I go to college. Guess what? You just added something to your resume. Thanks for working for free. So you can get kids, kids like doing these things. Uh, so get them involved. So thanks for listening. Um, what new ways have you seen to engage the next generation? Any questions, comments, concerns, complaints? Anyone? No? We've been really successful here, uh, kind of piggybacking off your Twitter thing. Um, we have a week-long spring festival on campus. <coughs> Uh, we have a thousand students who live on campus, and six hundred of them participate in this event. So oh wow! It's huge, um, and it's it's got to the big where point where we can't pay for it anymore. So uh, sports day happens on Saturday, it's the culminating event, and we wanted to have all these extra things because we're running out of space. So we went and contacted a bunch of gaming companies to see what they'd be willing to donate to us, and we said, you know, here's here's what we'll do for you. Our students will be out with their smartphones. They're going to be taking pictures of this event, and we'll have them hashtag you the whole day. And so, like, Jenga gave us these, like, Jenga XL, like, five-foot-tall Jenga games, like, a dozen of them for free, so long as it was something really, really low to, like, so long as, like, 25 tweets were sent out with their hashtag. 500 people, we had, like, hundreds of tweets that day with their hashtag. And other companies were willing to do that, too. So that's an option for trying to get them to donate things. Say, you know, like, we'll just blast your hashtag or your handle or whatever, whatever they want to do. Our students will do that. And the students will. It's easy to get them to do that. So that, you can use that. Yeah, for National Gaming Day, we got, I don't remember the, <coughs> Reaper miniatures, you guys know? They're like miniatures, like little like board figures that you can paint and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never heard of it, but my colleague says, hey, let's, let's try to do this miniature thing for, <coughs> for National Game Day. So he tweeted out like two companies, Reaper, Reaper miniatures respond within the hour, and they're like, yeah, 300, we'll send you a $300 gift card, buy whatever you want. And that was that, like, they're like, yeah, sounds cool, take some pictures, you know, hashtag essentially yeah. too, and that was that. And so we had $300 worth of paint and little plastic things, and surprisingly the kids really liked it. I'm like, I don't, I don't think kids will do this, this looks really hard. Nope, kids got to take a miniature home, they thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Anyone else? Um, we're actually celebrating for the first time this year Free Comic Book Day at the library. <coughs> we partnered with our local comic book shop, and they actually get like these certain comics for like pennies on the dollar. They actually agreed to order a bunch a bunch of the comics for us so we can give out. And we're actually celebrating it kind of like a week long thing, we're doing kind of different superhero themed activities okay. in order to culminate to this Free Comic Book Day at the end of the week. So, very cool. I mean, hopefully, we'll get a good response for it. But. <laughs> Are you going to publish any of it? Yeah, it's in our program guide. No, no, I mean the, the, the comic, are they going to make comics as well, or? Oh, no, they're just okay. like free generalized comics, like some of them are Marvel, some are like Bugs Bunny. They're separated by age groups, so you can do this with teens or with the, with the kids. There's, um, so you can make it age specific if you really wanted to. Very cool. Anyone else? Anyone still need fun this weekend? What did you say? I'm sorry. Anyone doing anything fun this weekend? <laughs> I'm going to New Orleans on Sunday. That's fine. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, so really the big thing is, you know, engage your patrons, engage your library, um, and you'll have more, more better turnout um, just because you've had those communications with your patrons.